The next task is to describe this half page in the class handouts. This is the top half of a page. Let's get oriented. It's type 1. Short run type 1. Together with long run cases A and B. So that's the framework. The top part reminds you what type 1 is in the short run. Graph 1 shows you the cross-section of the production function. That generates everything else that type 1 is. Type 2, I mean graph 2, just reminds you what the average product of water and the marginal product of water is. Here, the variable input is water holding fertilizer fixed. From graph 1, you know, you can go to graph 3, showing short run total cost and variable cost. We did that a few lessons ago. And from graph 3 you can get graph 4 showing the average and marginal. Short run average total cost, short run average variable cost, and short run marginal cost. So 1, 2, 3, and 4 we've done before. That's just a repeat. Let's look at 5 and 6. You will recall that A is the constant returns to scale case. And I already showed that if you have constant returns to scale, long run total cost is a straight line. Long run total cost always starts at zero, and constant returns to scale is a straight line. That's where we're going to pick up. So if longer total cost is a straight line, what does longer run average and longer marginal cost look like? Well, we actually already figured out what longer run average cost looked like in constant returns to scale. That's the way we derive the longer run total cost. But just in case you don't remember, the averages will be slopes of lines like that, and all those are constant. And that's the reason why long run average cost is going to be a constant. How about the marginals? We've never looked at the marginal. Well, the marginals are just tangent lines like this. And since long run total cost is a constant, the marginal is going to be a constant. And long run marginal cost is going to equal long run average cost. I'm going to skip the short run curves for a moment. Let's look at Type B. Type B, you may recall, is increasing returns to scale. The long run total cost curve in type B is concave. Long run average cost is falling. We actually got long run average cost first, and that's the way we derived the long run total cost was concave. But you could also go the other way. F from uh, long run total cost to long run average cost. Lines for the average would look like that. Clearly that's going to generate a, generate a long run average cost that's falling. How about long run marginal cost? Tangent lines like this. And like this. So the tangent lines are getting flatter. Long run marginal cost is falling. And when you compare average to marginal, for example, here, the average is a lot steeper than the marginal. So average is above marginal. And that's what I've shown in graph number eight. And average is above marginal. You know when average is falling, marginal has to be below it. All right, now, the remaining question is how do the short run curves fit into this? In graph number 5, I've drawn one short run total cost curve. You know there are an infinite number of them, like this, and this, and this. And they're the ones, all these different short run total cost curves, generated the long run total cost curve. 
in graph number six, we go from graph number four and five to graph number six. Also, perhaps the best thing to do is to sketch graph number five again. So here's a short run, one of the short run total costs. Here's the long run total cost. At a particular value of Q, look at the average for the long run and the short run. The average for the long run is going to be this, and the average for the short run is going to be this. Short run's bigger. It's more expensive to operate in the short run and the long run, on average, and also in total. Why? Well, because in the short run you're constrained of what amount of fertilizer to pick, and in the long run you can do anything you want. How about for another value of Q? Same story. The long run average is the slope of this line. The short run average is the slope of this, this line. Short run average is still bigger. So the short run average is going to be bigger than the long run average. Now, there is a, an exception at this point here. Short run total and long run total are the same. So short run average and long run average are the same. So the pattern is short run average total cost is bigger than long run average cost. Same thing is true here. Short run average total cost is bigger than long run average cost. Right in the middle where the totals are equal, the averages are equal. Short run average total cost equals long run average cost. So right in the middle you have equality. But if you were else, the short run average total cost is bigger than the long run average cost. So look at the way I drew it in graph number six. Right in the middle, short run average cost equals short run average total cost equals long run average cost. But everywhere else, short run average total cost is bigger than long run average cost. The basic shapes of short run average total cost and here of short run marginal cost just come from graph number four. I just left out graph number four is short run average variable cost because that's not very important. But what we've got is an infinite number of short run average total cost curves all over here. And each one of them has its own short run marginal cost curve. So the big one that I drew is just so that you can get a, a an easier example, you, a, a bigger example, so you can see what's going on. But there are actually an infinite number of these pairs of short run average total costs and short run marginal costs. Next to graph 7 and 8. Again, in graph 7, I've just shown one short run total cost curve. There are an infinite number of other ones. Here's, I'll draw one dashed. Oh, I should use a different color though, shouldn't I? Maybe I'll draw one more. So those are alternative short run total costs, but I'm just going to concentrate on the one that I, I drew here. Just like in graph number six, I want to claim that we're always going to have short run average total cost bigger than long run average cost, except at one point. Now let's forget about the except at one point for the moment. Otherwise, it's obvious that short run average total cost is going to be longer than long run average cost because if you have a certain quantity that you want to produce you want complete freedom over how much water and fertilizer to buy and if you don't have complete freedom like in the short run then your hands are tied and then things are not going to be as good for you 
And what as good for you means in this context is it's going to cost you more. So in general, it's going to cost you more in the short run than it does in the long run to produce any particular Q because in the short run your options are limited and in the long run your options are unlimited. Now how about the except at one point? Well, let's move to graph number 7 and I want you to look at the point where short run total cost is equal to long run total cost. Every short run total cost curve will hit long run total cost curve at one point. Now at that point, which is here, the totals are equal. How about the averages? Well, the averages are going to be equal too because, because if the totals are equal, then the averages are equal. A line that you draw to, to show the average would look like this. It's a bit hard to draw. And that line is the same for the long run curve and for the short run curve. So the averages are equal. How about the marginals? Well, those two curves are tangent to each other. So I just drew this tangent line, and that's going to be tangent to both the total curve, short run total uh, cost curve, and the long run total cost curve. So at the point where the totals are equal, this point here, the averages are also equal and the marginals are also equal. So at the point, uh, graph number 8, where the totals are equal, the averages are also going to be equal and the marginals are, are going to be equal. So whenever the totals are equal, the averages are equal, and the marginals are equal. At every other point, short and average total cost is bigger than long and average cost. So short and average cost, this line here, I'll just mark the ends, is bigger than long and average cost. I'll mark those ends. The rest of the geometry you just get from graph number four where short run average total cost reaches its minimum, marginal cost has to go through it. And so that gives you two points on the marginal cost curve. And then you just draw the, the marginal cost curve in. In graph number eight, you shouldn't assign any importance to the fact that, for example, the long run marginal cost curve looks convex and the long run average cost curve looks like it starts out being concave and then becomes convex. We don't know anything about those kind of shapes. You know long run average cost is falling, you know long run marginal cost is falling. That's all you know. They, they could be straight lines, uh, their convexity or concavity, uh, there's, there's no way to know that at this level of generality. I, I have shown another set of short run curves there, short run average total cost and short run marginal cost, just to show that there are an infinite number of these that are generated by each one of the short run total co cost curves from graph number seven. What we're going to do in the next lesson is the second half of this page, which again is going to be type one cross sections, but now it's going to be types C and D.